Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Welcome to part two of my Paizo RPG Goblin Test series. Last week we took a look at Pathfinder 1st Edition, and this week we're going to be making a first level fighter using the Pathfinder 2nd Edition playtest booklet. Uh, we're going to be using the version of the rules that are presented in the physical copy of the book. Uh, I'm not going to go through and apply the different updates uh, based off of like the playtest feedback or anything like that. <clears throat> I do have them on my computer, but I honestly just don't want to go through all of that. Um, maybe, maybe I, you know, might consider at some point in the future doing a play test with like, um, the, or doing a, a goblin test with the play test booklet with all the, the differences, like changes and updates applied. But for now, honestly, I'm just going to do based off of the earliest version of the Pathfinder second edition play test rules. Uh, so before we get into it, uh, just a couple things that I want to sort of mention as far as ground rules for this test and something that I just want to reiterate, um, that I've mentioned in the previous video, but I really want to just sort of try to explain it maybe a little clearer here. Uh, so in the comments for the Pathfinder first edition playtest, somebody had mentioned that giving the fighter uh, chainmail, which combined with their dex and their shield bonus, uh, ended up giving them a 20 armor class, like a ridiculously high armor class, and the person st stated that that may have been a little bit excessive. And that's, that's a fair point. Like, I can definitely understand that. Um, but there was a reason why I went with that loadout of equipment. Uh, number one, it was totally doable with the funds that the character has uh, available to them based off of the average results um, that it gives you for the starting equipment. Uh, you can usually roll like a set of dice, add them together, and then multiply that result by 10 to get your starting, you know, gold value. Uh, but as a general rule, I just go with whatever the average is. So if I were running Pathfinder First Edition, all of the characters would just, you know, when they're making their characters at first level, they would just get whatever the average result is. And it will say for each class sort of in, in parentheses. So uh, that's sort of like, I, I wanted to make sure that it was something that was doable, and it was. And all the equipment that I had was all um, available to me uh, for the amount of gold that I had. The armor took up like almost, it took up a very significant chunk of it. But I still had enough left over to buy my longsword, to buy my wooden shield, and to buy like some, you know, pythons and rope and a little hammer, uh, a bedroll and some rations and a couple of torches. So it was all it was all doable. But the reason that I go with that equipment is because I want each of these tests to have as much similarities as possible, and I want the main variable to be not what they have. Uh, in terms of equipment, but what the mechanics of the system allows, right? So if with the older editions of the D&D playtest, and pretty much all of them, I think maybe with the exception of the third edition or 3.5 fighter, um, they've all had the chainmail and shield and sword. So that's the loadout that I want to continue to use as much as possible. That way it eliminates, uh, you know, as much of the variables as variables as possible. So that's sort of the, the reason there. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about are some ground rules for how I'm going to use the fighter for this playtest. Now as always I designed the character the same way that I would if I were making it as a player character that I was going to be playing myself in a campaign. So I'm not going to I'm not going to purposefully choose feats solely for the purposes of skewing the results of this test. Uh, I'm going to take things that I think would be useful uh, as a first level character to have in my repertoire of abilities. Uh, we also have a three action combat system instead of like a move standard and uh, like reaction or bonus action like we had with 5th edition D&D or like the move action and reaction that we've had for like 3rd edition D&D and 4th edition D&D. Uh, so this one just gives us three actions that we can always take. Uh, now we are going to use a shield and I want that shield to be factored into the armor class uh, as much as possible. So with the three action economy, um, the final action of each round is always going to be to raise the shield. Uh, I want that to be available as much as possible, so I don't want to get into a situation where the fighter um, makes an attack, kills a goblin, and then uses their second action to take a five foot step, and then uses their third action to make another attack, and then not have their shield available to them. <clears throat> so for now, for this version of the test at least, I'm going to just have it so that they always have to raise their shield at the end of the turn, meaning that they only have two other actions. Uh, it's also really not worth taking an action to step forward uh, for the purposes of this test. 
<clears throat> because um, it's just like it, the goblins are in a straight line uh, and basically when one's killed they just sort of like assembly line or congo line their way forward. So um, for the purposes, like I said, of this test, um, the fighter won't be taking a step or anything like that. So if they knock a goblin down with their first action, then their second action is simply going to be to raise their shield, and then that will be the, uh, the end of their turn. Now also, <clears throat> in the Pathfinder playtest, as well as Pathfinder 2nd Edition, uh, shields have an ability called Shield Block. And uh, what it is is that if you've readied an action uh, with a shield on your turn uh, and you take damage or you're hit by an attack, you can use your reaction to absorb some of the damage from the blow. Uh, so the way that it works is that you subtract, in the plate test, the way that it works is that you subtract the damage that you would take, uh, you subtract the shield's hardness from that number. So if your hardness is three and you take five points of damage, you subtract three and the fighter takes two. Now in the final rules for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, shields have hit points. Uh, and then when they take a certain amount of damage, uh, then they're considered to be broken, and then if they take all of their hit points, they're considered to be destroyed. Uh, the playtest doesn't use that. It has just basically a system with, uh, with dents. It's, it's the dent mechanic. So if a shield absorbs uh, less damage than its hardness, then it's fine. So if I use a shield block and the damage that is dealt to me is like two and I have a hardness of three, then that's it. There's just no damage done. The shield doesn't sustain anything because the physical durability of the shield was stronger than like the blow that was directed at me or directed at it. Uh, but if it takes any more than its toughness, or it's, it's not its toughness, its hardness in damage, um, then it gets a dent. And a, a shield can have a single dent and still be fully usable, but the second it takes uh, a second dent, uh, then it's considered to be broken. And uh, so after it absorbs damage, uh, if it takes damage equal to twice its hardness, uh, then it's just considered to be broken. It gets two dents and it's considered to be broken. Uh, so this can be a very powerful mechanic. And again, this I'm, I'm going to open the door for a more potentially optimized um, or maximized potential uh, for the playtest at a later point. Uh, but for now, I don't want to be using that shield block on every turn because, like I said, it only needs to take two dents before it's destroyed. Um, and once it's destroyed, it's gone for the duration of that particular uh, round of testing. So uh, what I'm going to do is have it be more of like a desperation thing. So when my fighter is reduced to five hit points or less, uh, he will use his reaction to absorb damage uh, from the shield. And once the shield's gone, it's gone until he's you know finished off. So again, we're going to see how this is going to play out. I think it's going to be very, very interesting. So those are the ground rules. Uh, you know, if you can think of a better way for me to, to test this version of the game, certainly let me know. And I might do that as a separate video. Um, but we still have a system where we can make multiple attacks. Um, so if we miss the goblin with our first attack, or if the goblin misses us with his first attack, it can make another one. Uh, and so the goblins, um, they get up to, they get their three actions. Um, if they're already in melee, then they could make up to three attacks. Now, the odds of them hitting with that third attack are one in 20. <clears throat> um, but um, so like, it, it's gonna be interesting to see how it's going to, uh, to balance out. Uh, all right, so we're just going to move this off to the side now because we're going to start talking about character creation. So as always with this test, we are making a first level fighter uh, character, human fighter. That's the that's the ancestry and that's the class that we're going to go with. Uh, we also use the default or the first of mentioned version of character creation if there's multiple uh, variants that you can choose from. Uh, with the play test, um, the default version uh, is essentially all of your attributes start at, at, at 10, and then your ancestry, your background, and your class will all give you certain boosts to attributes. Uh, they may be determined based on your ancestry. Like you may get one, um, like if you're a dwarf, I think you can put like, you get one in your constitution. Uh, I think you usually have a choice between like con and something else, but we'll just say for the purpose of this one, that like, you get one in your constitution. Uh, but you usually also get a free one that you can assign to any stat that you choose. However, uh, I've got them broken down. Like I said, I've got my chart here with my base numbers, ancestry, background, class, and then when you're done, you get four. You get four boosts uh, of which you can put um, into any four attributes, but they have to be four different ones. You can't put them into the same one. So if it's from a single source, uh, you cannot apply. 
uh, the free boost to, um, you can't apply the free boost to a stat that's already been boosted from the same source. So for example, like if we increased our con, uh, let's just say we increased our con with our uh, st set boost and we wanted to increase it again with our free boost, we wouldn't be able to do that in the Ancestry. We'd have to uh, use like background or, or something else to, to put that boost into. But you can put free boosts, uh, multiple free boosts into the same stat as long as they're from different sources. So for example, if I put my free boost uh, from my ancestry into strength, and then I had a free boost from my background, I put that into strength and your class is, is predetermined. But then I had the first level one as well that I could put into like the free boost. I could put those three different sources all into strength, but they're coming from different they're coming from different pools, if that makes sense. Like I'm not, I'm not double dipping. It's, it, it'll make more sense as we go through and do it, and then we just total everything up. Uh, I want to say 18 is the maximum number that you can get using this method. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, and uh, you have like a boost which gives you plus two to an attribute, and you can have a flaw which gives you minus two. Uh, humans don't have flaws. Uh, humans just get two uh, free boosts they can put from their ancestry into uh, any of any two attributes. So. Uh, that's pretty simple there. And then we got our background, like I said, our class is fixed. Uh, the fighter class gives you a boost to either your strength or dexterity. And we're going to be putting it into strength, and then we get our first level ones, and then we're sort of, uh, we're, we're at the point where we got our final numbers. Uh, also, for the Pathfinder playtest, your ancestry gives you a one-time set of uh, bonus hit points that you add to your uh, maximum hit point value. So it's not just your class that's providing hit points. In this game, your ancestry provides you with some as well. Uh, your con modifier gives you some, and then your class gives you some. Uh, when you gain levels, uh, you only gain additional hit points based off of your class and your con mod. So the ancestry hit points is like a one-time bonus. Um, I hope that makes sense. If you do have any questions about that, if I didn't quite explain it super clearly because it's like 1.30 in the morning when I'm doing this, uh, please let me know and I will try to have a better explanation for you. Uh, in the uh, in the comments, but let's just take a look quickly at our ancestry. We're going to take a look at the ancestry, uh, the backgrounds, and we're going to take a look at our uh, class. And we're basically going to just choose the abilities and stuff that we're going to have uh, right off the bat. And then we are going to just I'll, I'll cut the I'll cut the the video, and then I'll fill in all the boring details on the character sheet. So uh, we've got human. So humans. Ability boost, they get two free ones, so they can't go into the same one. Uh, so as a fighter, it's going to be going, one's going to be going into strength, one's going to be going into con. Uh, and then we've got our um, heritage. Oh, yes, we don't have heritages in this one, right? I'm, it's been a while since I've looked at the playtest, so you have to bear with me. Uh, but each, each race or ancestry gives you, you get like a first level um, ancestry feat. So we're going to be taking probably the general training feat for um, for the human, uh, which basically allows you to choose a first level general feat instead of um, choosing one of the things that we have here. Uh, it's it's essentially this the equivalent of like so we had the the first level fighter human fighter in uh, in the first edition Pathfinder and they got a feat for being first level character, they got a feat for being a human, and they got a feat for being a fighter. It's basically the same thing that we're going to go with here. Um, but in this version, you can't be both. The, you can't get both the extra skill training and the extra feat like we did in Pathfinder First Edition. So we're going to go with the extra feat because that's probably what I would choose if I were making uh, this character here. So let's just start off with uh, the the key information, uh, which we want is the hit points and the attributes. So they get eight hit points. So I'm just going to write down under ancestry. We've got a spot here for hit points. That's eight. And I'm going to put their free boosts into one into strength, so that's plus two, and then one into con, which is also going to be plus two. Uh, they also have a speed of 25, so I'm just going to write that down now. And then they're going to take the um, general training, I think it was called. Yeah, general training feat. So that's the information for our ancestry. Now we're going to take a look at backgrounds. Uh, this character is going to be a... I think I'm going to give them... Uh, a, generally speaking, what I would have uh, for a first level fighter is I might give them like the farmhand or the warrior one. So this person may have ended up 
uh, essentially, like, when they became old enough, they ended up joining, like, Absalon City Watch, and then, you know, when they finished up um, their mandatory, you know, um, tour there, uh, they decided to become adventurers. Uh, so that's what I'm going to go with, and what we get here is we get two, two ability boosts. One must be strength or con, the other is a free boost. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put one, I'm going to put the one into strength, which is chosen. Uh, the free boost I'm actually going to put into wisdom, because that's going to give us our perception. And perception in the Pathfinder playtest, as well as second edition, is typically um, what you would use for your initiative. So I want to have at least a single uh, stat bonus in there. So that's what we're going to go with. Uh, so the warrior also gives us the quick repair skill feat. So we're just going to put uh, quick repair. Skill feat and it will give us uh, trained in the warfare lore. So skills, lore, warfare. <clears throat> All right, and that is our background, and then we're going to go on to our class. I'm like I said, I'm just going to talk through these choices now, and then I can fill all the uh, I can fill in like the rest of the details. Basically, I just want to do the attributes. Um, I want to sort of total those up on camera, so it might make a little bit more sense. Uh, all right, so key ability, which you get one boost into, is either strength or dexterity. We're going to go with strength, so that's going to give us another plus two. Uh, the fighter gains, uh, let's take a look here. So they gain, they're trained in three skills, uh, or a number of, sorry, they're trained in a number of skills equal to three plus their intelligence modifier. So it's going to be basically three plus their, uh, uh, plus their, um, plus the, uh, the, the warfare lore that we have there. Uh, we're not going to worry about signature skills because the character sheet that I have is actually from the first update, uh, for the play test. Uh, all the signature skills really are, are they're the skills based on your class that you can take up to legendary training. Uh, after the very first update, they removed that ability and then any skill can essentially be trained up to legendary level. Uh, so that's all that is, so we're not going to worry about that. Uh, they are an expert in simple and martial weapons, so that affects their proficiency bonus. Uh, they are trained in all exotic weapons, they're trained in armor and shield, they're an expert in fortitude and uh, reflex saving throws. They're trained in will. They're an expert in perception. Uh, all right. And then we've got basically the main thing with our fighters. They get a first level fighter feat. And the one that I'm going to take is actually going to be uh, Furious Focus. Uh, so Furious Focus states uh, when the requirement is that you're wielding a melee weapon without the agile trait. The longsword does not have the agile trait. It has a versatile trait, which can be used to deal piercing instead of slashing damage, but that's the only trait that it has. So it works for the, for the purposes of this feat. Uh, so when you use this feat, you make a strike. <clears throat> uh, it's a single action, and you make the strike as part of the Furious Focus action. Uh, the strike gains the following failure effect. So on a failure, it does not count towards your multiple attack penalty. So if you take more than one attack in a round, uh, the way that it works is your first attack is at your full bonus, your second attack is at a negative five, and then your third attack and any other attack that you are able to make after that third one uh, is at a negative 10. So you never get more than a negative 10 penalty on your attack rolls. <clears throat> but that's so, like with this one, if we use Furious Focus, uh, when they make their attack, if they miss, I can make a second one at my full bonus. And that's, like, for me personally, I would rather have more consistency in the ability to hit than something like Power Attack, which takes two actions, but allows you to deal an extra weapon die if you hit. I'm not as concerned about that at first level. That's something that I might consider taking later on, but for first level, we're going to go with the Furious Focus, so that when we miss, and we probably will miss, and I know myself, and I'm building this character as if I'm the one playing it in the campaign, and I know that I miss a lot, <clears throat> so I'd like to not be penalized for that as much as possible. So that's what we're going to take for our fighter. Uh, and then we got to get into the uh, the feats here. So the skills just tells you the different types of skills. That's, you know, we don't really need to worry about that for the purposes of this test. But we do want to go into feats. So with my general training, I could choose a general feat uh, from first level. So uh, general feats uh, we've got here. And then we have, um, like, skill feats, which are a separate thing. So I can only choose from this 
uh, list here. Um, if it has the skill, it's considered a skill trait or skill feat. So we're just looking at this first block here. Uh, I think basically what I'm going to take is incredible initiative um, because as a fighter, I would want to go first to get into a good position. And uh, what we're going to do with that is it's going to give me a plus one bonus on my initiative checks. Uh, and that doesn't, it doesn't matter what skill I'm using for initiative, it's perception or something else, I will get a plus one bonus for it on, uh, on everything. So that's what we're going to do there uh, for that feat. And the last thing, we're just going to take a quick look at the equipment. We start with 150 silver pieces, because this was a silver piece standard. Um, I can't remember, I, it's been, uh, I shouldn't say it's been a while, but just off the top of my head at this late at night, I, I think it went back to gold in uh, Pathfinder 2E, like the final rule set. Uh, but what we have here, so we start with 150 gold, uh, silver pieces. Uh, Chainmail is 60 silver pieces, so we'd still have 90 left over. And uh, with that 90... Uh, we're going to get our, whoop, uh, we're going to get our shield. Now, the first edition Pathfinder character used a heavy wooden shield, so that's what I'm going to use here as well. Uh, okay, so we got the, the shields. Uh, oh, where is their toughness? Okay, I may have to look through the book to find uh, what their what their toughness is. Oh, it's right here. Uh, never mind. Uh, so their hardness is three for wooden shields or five for steel. So it doesn't matter if it's a large or small. So wooden shield is going to have a three uh, a three hardness. Okay, so we've got the the heavy wooden shield. That's going to be another ten silver. So that's seventy. And then we've got our um, and then we've got our long sword which is going to be another 10, so that's 80, and I might choose like a bow or something like that. <clears throat> um, but I'm probably not going to fill up the rest of the equipment. I just want to make sure that I can afford uh, the chainmail, shield, and sword, and we're going to go from there. Uh, the chainmail has an armor bonus of 4, uh, so we got 4 <clears throat> with a maximum a dex cap of uh, plus 3. So we'll be able to get our dex modifier if we have one. Uh, and so there'll be four, we get to add a proficiency bonus, so we're going to see what all that, uh, all those numbers are, uh, sort of when we're at the end there. But that's basically that information. So let's go back and finish our attributes here, and we're going to be good to go. So we got <clears throat> basically our class information all taken care of. Uh, we've got our background, we've got our ancestry, so when we got all that information, we get four bonuses, <clears throat> or four boosts that we can apply uh, to our uh, attributes. So we're going to put one into strength. We're going to put one into dex, we're going to put one into con, and uh, let's, or uh, yeah, strength, dex, and con, and let's actually put one more into, uh, put one into charisma, uh, and we'll put that into charisma because again, if I were playing at this character, I may want to be able to like persuade or intimidate. Uh, and the charisma is what they use for that. So uh, well, let's tally up our stats here, and then I'm just going to cut and fill in all the details, and we will be good to go. So uh, strength, we have our base 10. We have uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, so we're going to start with an 18 strength. Uh, dexterity is going to be 12. Uh, con is going to be 14. Uh, intelligence is going to be 10. Uh, wisdom is going to be 12, and Charisma is going to be 12. So those are our starting attributes. Uh, proficiency bonus, uh, I want to say, uh, yeah, here we go. So proficiency bonuses, uh, in this version of the game, if you're trained, it's equal to your level. So a first level character, if they're trained in something, they get a plus one bonus. Uh, and then if they're an expert, it's their level plus one. So the finalized rules have higher numbers. I think uh, basic, basically being trained is your level plus two. Expert is like your level plus four, and that's like two, four, six, eight. Uh, here it's it's equal to your level, and then level plus one, plus two, and plus three. So the bonuses actually aren't going to be as high as the finalized rule set. So that might uh, have an effect as well. So, uh, yeah, like I said, we got the, the basic information. We talked about the equipment. We talked about the, the proficiencies. Uh, we talked about the feats that we're going to be taking. Uh, for skills, I'm going to be taking uh, probably, um, let's see here, I'm going to be taking Diplomacy. 
uh, for sure, athletics, and we get one more to choose from, it would probably be medicine. So I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, fill all that information in, and I will be back, and we can start uh, the test with the goblin. So uh, just bear with me. I will be, well, I'll be back in the video, like, in seconds, but this is going to take me a little time to fill out. So I'll be right back. All right, so we are back. I only really filled in the aspects of the sheet that are really going to pertain to this test. Um... There's only a couple things that I really just didn't bother with. Oh, i got to finish my fortitude stuff here. Hold on. My saving throws, so I get plus two, plus two, plus one. Okay, that should be everything. Uh, all right, so here's what we got for a character. Uh, the only thing I didn't like to fill in were the skills that I'm not trained in. Uh, those end up all getting a negative four penalty on top of, like, whatever my attribute is. <clears throat> so it's going to be, uh, everything's going to be either minus four or minus three. Uh, so I just didn't want to fill all that in. And again, we're not going to be using the skills for the purposes of this test anyway. Uh, that is one change that definitely uh, was an improvement between the play test and the final rules. And the final rules, if you're untrained, it's, you just don't get a bonus at all. <clears throat> Instead of, like, it being your level minus four, it was just no bonus. Uh, so that means basically until you reach like fourth level, there's really no reason to ever attempt an untrained skill. But here we go. So we got our attributes. Uh, so we have the scores here and the modifiers. So we get uh, 18, 12, 14, 10, 12, and 12. So for plus four strength, plus one dex, uh, plus two con, zero for modifier for intelligence, plus one wisdom, plus one charisma. Follows the same thing as the other uh, D20 licensed RPGs. We got our perception, and we got a proficiency bonus of plus two and a wisdom bonus of plus three. So we get plus, uh, or plus one, sorry, so we get plus three total. When I'm rolling initiative, I actually get plus four because of my incredible uh, initiative feat, which I just filled the feats in there so I know what I've got access to. Uh, fortitude, reflex, and will, I just filled those out here, but uh, essentially, again, we're probably not going to be needing those for the purposes of this test. Uh, armor class is going to be uh, 16 for the base armor class. Uh, the playtest had a touch armor class as well, and your different armors could affect uh, your touch armor class, unlike Pathfinder 1st Edition, where your touch armor class, uh, your armor didn't factor in at all. Uh, so, for example, with our chainmail, it gives us a plus four bonus to our regular AC, but it also gives us a plus one bonus to our touch AC. Again, that's not really going to come into play, but I thought I'd show it there. Uh, when we use the raise a shield action, we're going to get our plus two to armor class, because I just want to double check, but the, the heavy shield should give us a plus two bonus. Those are the, whoop, too far. Yeah, so the shield, whoop, there we go. So the, the heavy wooden shield, plus two to armor class, plus two to touch armor class again, but uh, we're not going to worry about that. Uh, so when we use the raise a shield action, armor class is going to be 18. Uh, and we have the shield block as our reaction and our hardness of three. So again, we can basically, um, if we take anything more than three, we take the excess and our shield gets dented. The second time it gets dented, it's considered to be broken. <clears throat> I just filled in the uh, the skills that we were trained in. Uh, athletics, like I get plus four for my strength, but my armor gives me a negative three. So I still only get plus two. Like my highest skill bonus is going to be plus two. Uh, my next highest is going to be plus one. And then everything else is going to be either negative four or negative three. Uh, oh, and we get plus six to our attack rolls. So we have four for our ability score, plus two for our proficiency. Uh, because expert proficiency gives us our, if, again, if I can get it to, it's level plus one. So first level, an expert level of training would give us a total of plus two. So we get two for proficiency, plus four for our strengths. So we get plus six to hit. Uh, our damage is 1d8 plus 4, and it can be either piercing or slashing. And then just on the second sheet here, the only things I filled in were the feats. So we have our ancestry feats, we get general training, and I took incredible initiative. Uh, our skill feat is quick repair. We have attacks of opportunity as a first level fighter. Uh, and then we also have the furious focus, which basically, if we miss, uh, the next attack doesn't count towards our, uh, our multiple attack penalty, which will hopefully come in handy here. So that's really it. Um, the next thing to do is just, uh, just look, take a look at the goblin here. Now, uh, the Pathfinder 2nd Edition playtest did not have a bestiary, like, physical release. 
I'm just going to turn the brightness down just a little bit to make this easier to read. Uh, so basically, I just looked at the uh, the PDF that I had downloaded, and uh, the goblin that I'm choosing here is the Goblin Warrior. Uh, there is, a, I think it's called like a Goblin Soldier or something like that. Uh, it's a tougher version. It's got a, so the uh, the Goblin Warrior that we have here is a creature level of zero. It's kind of equivalent to what we had for the first edition Pathfinder Goblin. Uh, similar in terms of their attributes and their bonuses and all that stuff. Um, although they actually get a much higher attack bonus. So these guys are going to be laying in the damage a little more frequently, I think. Uh, so we've got uh, we, we've got the, the basic goblin here. I could take the more powerful one, but again, that's a more powerful version of the base goblin. And with this test, it's supposed to be the base uh, version of the goblin. So that's what we're going to go with. So I just basically copied and pasted the stat block into onto a blank document. And I just printed off what we're going to, the, the relevant information here. So <clears throat> we get plus one to perception, so that's going to be their initiative. Uh, and then they've got a 14 armor class, uh, six hit points, and they are going to get a plus six bonus to hit and do a d6 slashing damage. So I'm looking forward to this overall. So what I'm going to do is just bring out a few dice. We're going to need uh, a d20. Oh. So we're going to need a d20, we're going to need a d6, and we're going to need a d8. And that should be all that we're going to need. So let's just slide in our little visual aid here. Okay, now I'm actually going to turn the, the brightness back up a little bit so we can actually see uh, the goblins and hopefully just get a better look at the numbers that are going to show up on our dice here. So let's get, uh, let's get right into this, shall we? I am a lefty, so i got to situate things this way so I can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, all right, so we have our goblin stats. We've got our little combat tracker here. So let's just go ahead and roll initiative. I'm going to roll for uh, the fighter who I gave him the name Ethan once again. That's just the same name I'm going to use. Uh, so he is going to uh, roll first and he gets a plus four bonus because of his incredible initiative. So and that is a natural 20. So he's going to be going on an initiative of 24. Uh, the goblin can't physically match that, but we'll see what we can do here. And they're going to go on a 12. So this is going to be for the first round of testing. As always, I do the first round on camera, and then I'll do the other nine rounds off camera and come back with the results and the, the totals and everything else. Oh, uh, Ethan also has 20 hit points. Uh, he gained six for, uh, or sorry, he had eight for his ancestry. 10 for his class and 2 for his con modifier. I think I, I forgot to mention the hit points. So he does get 20 hit points and he is going to go first. So he's going to use his furious focus uh, on his first melee attack. Uh, so he's going to swing his longsword. He gets plus 6. The, the goblin has an armor class of 14. If he misses, then he can make a second attack and it would still be at that plus 6 bonus. Which, again, knowing how much I miss, like in the first edition Pathfinder one, there was like 11 consecutive rounds of everybody missing. So that was like 22 rolls uh, and nobody hitting. So let's see what we got here. So plus six. Oh my God, that's another, that's another natural 20. Uh, so that is a critical hit. Uh, critical hits do double damage. So you roll twice the dice and you add double your modifier. Unlike 5th edition D&D, you do actually double the modifier as well. So our goblin has six hit points. Uh, we we do we're doing a minimum of ten, so we're just gonna say that, that first goblin is toast. So goblin slain. We've got one so far, and then for his third action, he's going to raise his shield. The goblin, uh, the next goblin, and this is something I do have to track a little bit more. Uh, so the next goblin is going to spend his first action to take a step forward. All the other goblins will do the same. Uh, and then his second action, the goblin's going to make his first attack roll, uh, which is at a plus six bonus against a, an armor class of 18. Uh, and that's going to miss because that's 10 and 6 is 16. Because the shield's up, uh, that is going to miss. So Ethan gets to go next. And he's using his Fury, like, so I'm always going to use the Furious Focus for the first attack. Uh, so that misses. So his second attack... Uh, is going to be a total of 15, which does hit. So, uh, let's see if we kill this goblin. Uh, we're doing a minimum of 5, so as long as I don't roll a 1, this goblin's toast. And uh, that is a second goblin down, and then he's going to raise his shield. Uh, the next goblin moves up, 
and so do all of his friends. And the goblin's going to take a swing. First swing at plus six, that's going to miss. Uh, second attack is going to be at a... Oh, I think I forgot to do that with the other goblin, didn't I? Um, all right, let's just retroactively let that goblin take his second attack, um, which, uh, which would have missed anyway because he gets minus five, so he only attack at plus one. All right, uh, so this goblin's second attack. I do need to remember that. Uh, ooh, that is a 17. That's an 18 total, so that just hits with the second attack, which has the negative five penalty because he missed with the first one. So, Ethan is going to take 1d6 damage. And that is four, so he is down uh, to 16. And that's the uh, that was the goblin's second attack. And he moved forward, so that's it for the goblin. On Ethan's turn, Furious Focus for his first attack, which misses. Second attack will hit. Uh, and that is three dead goblins, and Ethan will raise his shield with his final action. Next, go uh, next to go are the goblins, so they're going to take a step forward. We're just going to repopulate these guys here, because I am keeping track of how many I've uh, killed on the sheet as well. So first attack at plus six will miss. Second attack at plus one uh, will definitely miss as well. That's the goblin's turn. So Ethan, Furious Focus, uh, hits the goblin. And that is four dead goblins. Uh, we're not going to take the, the step forward. Um, we're going to let the goblins come to him. So that's going to be basically his turn. He's just going to raise his shield, and that'll be it for him. Uh, so he's dead, and then the goblins will step forward. Goblin attack number one. Uh, that will hit. So that's 15. That's a total of 21. 15 plus 6. For another 4 damage, so Ethan is now down to 12. Uh, again, when he's reduced to 5 or less, he will start using his uh, shield block uh, reaction. And we're actually going to take our second swing with this goblin at a total of only plus 1, uh, because of the minus 5 penalty, and that's going to hit. That is 19 plus 1 for 20, not natural. It's not 10 plus the armor class of Ethan either, because there's no way the goblin's going to get 28. So it's not a critical, but it's still another hit for three more damage. So Ethan is now down to nine. Ethan's turn, Furious Focus. Uh, natural one, so that's a miss. His second attack. Uh, ooh, that's also going to miss, and now he's going to raise his shield. So now our goblin potentially has three swings on him. Uh, although the second one is going to be at a minus four penalty, so it's unlikely that's going to hit unless I roll a natural 20. Because uh, a natural 20... Uh, it's considered, it's still considered to be an automatic hit because it turns your failure into a success. Uh, but let's just go with the first attack. And the first attack is a total of 19. Uh, that hits Athan's 18 armor class with a shield, so the goblin is going to do 5 points of damage. This could be it. This could be it. Uh, now, so now Athan is at the point where he will be using his shield block uh, when he gets hit until the shield is destroyed. So, uh, second attack at just a plus one. Oh, and that is a natural 20. So that is going to double the damage. So we are going to... Uh, he's, so he's going to use his shield block to negate three of this. Uh, so he's going to negate that. And then another three. So he's down to one hit point. And his shield has one dent. It's still usable. But the next time it takes damage, um, well, the next time it takes damage, Ethan is dead anyway, because uh, he's going to be at zero and unconscious. Because uh, he would have to, the shield would have to take at least four uh, for it to be broken. So, ooh boy, uh, and that so that was the second attack. We got the third attack now, which actually could have used that natural twenty, and that's going to miss. So it's Ethan's turn now. He's going to use his furious focus. And that will hit the goblin, because that is going to be a total of 17. Uh, he does 9 damage, so that is another dead goblin. So that's, whoops, so that is 5 goblins total. Everybody's going to step forward, and he braces a shield, of course. Uh, so the first goblin spends, his, the next goblin spends his first action moving up. Second action is going to hit. Ethan is going to use his shield block. And that's, that's, that's game for him. Uh, the shield absorbs three, but he still... T so the goblin basically manages to smash through the splintered wooden shield uh, with his dog slicer 
cobbled together scrap iron weapon just smashes through the shield and delivers the killing blow to Athan. So, on round one of testing, of ten, so let's just, oops, fill that in now. Oops. So on round one, we managed to kill five goblins. So we'll see how the rest of the tests are going to go. Like, so I'm going to do them off camera just so I can go through them as quickly as possible. And then I will be back with the final results. All right, so that is 10 tests in the books. And uh, it was definitely interesting results. Uh, it was a little unexpected at first, but the more I kind of thought about it as the tests were going on, the more the results started to make uh, some sense to me here. So let's just go uh, show what we got here. I'm not going to bother showing the character sheet stuff again. And uh, this last, uh, like, this is the results of the final fight. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, eight goblins killed, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to track is if Athan ended up getting his shield destroyed by using shield block. Again, the criteria for him using the shield block was to be reduced to five hit points or less. Uh, and with the shield block, if the goblins did one, two, or three points of damage on their single d6 for, for their damage roll, uh, then the shield would absorb all of the damage and Athan would take nothing and the shield would not be dented because it, uh, it didn't take any excess damage. It took just enough to, uh, to equal the hardness or to meet the hardness. Uh, and, uh, you know, so if, if he, you know, got his blocks up, but the shield was still destroyed, I wanted to track that. So in the first one that we did on camera, Obviously, five goblins killed. His shield was not destroyed. Uh, on the second round, his shield was destroyed, but man, he was a beast in round two because he took down 19 goblins. There was nothing really super noteworthy. Um, it was just situations where the goblins just couldn't, were just not rolling well. And uh, especially with that first attack, like if they don't hit with the first attack, then they only have a 20% chance of hitting with the second attack. Uh, because they need to roll 17, 18, 19, or 20 in order to hit. Uh, so it, it, it was pretty rough for them on the second round. 19 goblins killed, uh, but his shield was destroyed. And the hit that took him down got through the hardness of the shield, destroyed the shield, and uh, the excess was still enough to, to take him down. Because he only, have, he only had one hit point left at that point, so if the shield didn't block at all, then he was dead. Uh, round three, uh, repeat of round one, five goblins killed, shield was not destroyed. On round four, this was brutal. Ethan only managed to kill two goblins. Now, what happened was the first goblin that went uh, hit Ethan twice and did maximum damage on both of those D6s. So the first roll with the plus six bonus was enough to hit, and then the second roll, I think I rolled a 17 or 18. So it was either just enough or it was, you know, the exact armor class with the plus one bonus. Uh, and taking 12 of your 20 hit points right off the bat, like he, he started combat with 8 hit points before he even got to go because the goblins went first that round. Uh, so yeah, he was definitely at a disadvantage and it didn't take long for the next goblins to, uh, to finish him off. Uh, I think he got knocked down, I think the next hit did 2 to him, so he was at 6. And then the next goblin that hit actually did max damage again, and that finished him off before he really got to use a shield. So that's what happened there. Only two goblins killed, so they uh, they did not like how round two went, and they uh, they let it be known. Uh, on round five, his shield was destroyed. Um, he killed six goblins, but uh, the first goblin to go, um, Ethan had already gone by this point, but the first goblin that actually got a chance to act, uh, once again hit with both of his attacks. Uh, but the second hit was actually a critical, and uh, so Ethan ended up taking 14 points of damage from a single uh, round of attacks from a goblin. So again, that was pretty brutal, but uh, he did manage to still take out six. Uh, his shield was destroyed in the process. Uh, round six, uh, his shield was not destroyed. This was the last time the shield was not destroyed, uh, but he managed to kill seven goblins. Uh, so round seven, eight, nine, and ten, his shields were destroyed every single time. The shield uh, ended up being damaged or broken, basically, to the point where it couldn't be used. Destroyed's the wrong term, but it was broken uh, on six out of the ten uh, uh, tests. Uh, so, yeah, on round seven, he killed nine goblins. On round eight, he killed nine goblins. Just good back and forth, nothing really noteworthy that happened there. On round nine, he only killed four goblins because there were two goblins that ended up getting critical hits against him, and um, that's that's brutal, right? Um, and they rolled halfway decent for those attacks as well. I forgot to record the amount of damage because they were two separate attacks and separated by, 
you know, a, a couple of dead goblins in between. But uh, yeah, that was a pretty rough one for him as well. And then on the final round, he uh, managed to take out eight goblins before his shield was destroyed, and then he was eventually killed himself. Uh, so, uh, that ended up being a total of 74 goblins killed over the course of 10 tests, and when you add them up and divide them by 10, pretty easy math, 7.4 goblins on average were killed by Athan in each of these tests. So, it's actually lower than I was kind of expecting, and it is lower than the first edition Pathfinder uh, fighter, who killed 106 goblins for a total average, or for an average of 10.6 uh, per round of testing, but there's a few things that really go to justify that and like the more I was I was You know going through the test the more it really started to make sense So number one uh, the goblins are going to be hitting a heck of a lot more in the second edition play test than they were in the first edition uh, you know bestiary version of the uh, of the goblins because the first edition goblins only had a plus two bonus to hit and we're rolling a d4 for damage uh, the goblins here have a plus six bonus to hit, and they're rolling a d6 for damage, plus uh, they still get a chance to make a second attack every round, even if they have to step forward to, to meet Aethon before they can start attacking, they still got to make a second attack. And even though that second attack only had a plus one bonus, they still hit, uh, they still had a better range to hit Aethon uh, with that second attack at the minus five penalty than the uh, the first edition Pathfinder goblins had with their full bonus, because they hit on a 17, 18, or 19, and if Athan's shield was destroyed, then they could hit with their second attack at a plus one bonus on a roll of a 15 or better. So, like, the goblins were just hitting more often, they had a higher average of damage, and because their goblins were rolling more frequently, it increased the chances that they were going to roll a critical hit. Um, so that's kind of what ended up happening, and that's sort of what's what's reflected here. Um, I mean, Nathan got uh, a few crits against him in you know various rounds. The worst though was the the fifth round where he got, um, or sorry, on the ninth round where he got uh, critted against him twice by two separate goblins. That was rough. Uh, but it just, yeah, it, it makes sense. Like, he has more hit points, but the goblins are still, like, they're hitting more regularly and they're doing more damage. So it's 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 actually a lot more logical than I was, you know, maybe initially thinking. Uh, so let me know in the comments below. Are you surprised by the fact that these uh, playtest goblins actually were more lethal against our character with, um, you know, the shield block? Um, the 20 hit points, all that stuff, or do you, it doesn't make sense to you as well, just based on the law of averages when it comes to the amount of times the rolling and the, the higher dice value that they have for their damage rolls. Uh, I was surprised at first, but like I said, it made more sense as time went on. The thing that surprised me the most was the fact that Athan's shield was destroyed 60% um, of the time, uh, just trying to keep himself alive once he reached that uh, you know threshold of five hit points. So... I think if I were to do this again, I might actually increase that number because, um, the, like, very, very rarely was his shield destroyed and he wasn't killed by that last hit. Uh, I think it was only the last two rounds where the goblins really got to attack against the armor class of 16. Uh, so, I don't know. Uh, I may I may actually do a second set of tests for the, the, the playtest era uh, character that might be like a bonus video at the end and just change a few things up like maybe increase the threshold that he starts using the shield block at um instead of it being uh at five hit points i might have it like six seven or eight hit points um i might allow him to actually take a step forward if he kills a goblin to attack the next one in line and sacrifice the use of his shield instead of always you know making sure that he had it available uh, so I might try, I might uh, do like a second test with this guy and just see if he can do a little bit better. But we still have to see how the second edition, the finalized rule set for second edition Pathfinder, how that version of Athan is going to do against this Congo line of murderous goblins. So that will be next week. Uh, so for now, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I love doing these. They're just they're it's silly, but it's fun. And uh, one of the things that I mentioned on one of my Twitch streams is. Uh, for 2022, I kind of want to sort of shift back, um, not my main focus, but ensure that I do more videos that I just enjoy the idea of and just do it and have fun doing it as opposed to uh, moving from review to review to review to review, uh, which kind of burns you out after a while. I still have some stuff to review that I'm going to be throwing in there as well, but I want to make sure that I start actually just doing more fun videos 
um, like this. And I, I really enjoy this. So I hope you guys do as well. And uh, let me know in the comments below, would you be interested in seeing a bonus test uh, with Ethan, uh, with the same character, but just, you know, utilizing the three action system a little bit better, uh, taking the risk reward of not using a shield for, you know, for the fact that he may get hit more often. Let me know what you think of that uh, in the comments below. And I hope you guys come back next week for the second edition Pathfinder Goblin test, because I'm really looking forward to that one. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Take care.